Hi, welcome to a value moment from Energy South Oil Field Services. Today we're going to talk about safe handling of benzene in the workplace. I'm Jamie Curry. Benzene is an aromatic compound. It's, a, it's an aromatic ring structure with, with uh, six carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, each joined by, by three dub, double bonds and three single bonds. Benzene in pure form is a clear, it's a clear liquid, and you would likely not encounter pure benzene in the workplace. Uh, likely you would find benzene in the pure benzene in a laboratory, for, in a laboratory under a fume hood like this. And it is, uh, benzene by the way, in pure form is, is uh, sweet, it has a sweet odor to it, aroma. Prior to World War I, benzene was used as an anti-knocking compound in car engines and as a solvent. Today there are more, uh, more substitutes for benzene, so it's not used for that anymore. Benzene is an important raw material though. It's in a whole lot of things like styrenes and plastics and pesticides, a wide range of things, detergents, rubber. There's a whole plethora of names for it, like ethyl benzene, cumene, cyclohexane, a bunch of names. And uh, I like to, this is Bubba Gump from, for, with, for, from the movie Forrest Gump. And there's actually way more names for different benzene compounds than there are for recipes to how, how to make shrimp. And sort of like benzyl, carbonyl, naphtha, cyclohexadrine, phenyl, the list goes on. And uh, benzene is found in gasoline by weight, 1% by weight. It's in gasoline, it's in diesel, it's in heating oil, it's in a wide range of products. In the oil field, you want to be mindful of that, but it's also in car exhaust. It's in benzene uh, is contained in hydrocarbon exhaust from a wide range of compressors and components that we power, rig, rig motors compressors, pumps, etc. All, all the uh, exhaust does contain benzene and the, from the fumes. In the oil field, uh, it, a lot of these levels of benzene that are released depends on the formation because you've got natural gas condensate, drilling fluids, crude oil, all these things have, uh, all these, uh, these uh, materials have benzene. And storage facilities, stock tanks, gas lines, uh, separators, various separators, including glycol separators. So when we're servicing those, we can be exposed to levels of benzene and um, like de um, pipelines, gas, I said that didn't I? Um, benzene is found in cigarette smoke. Be mindful of that. Studies by OSHA have shown that if you're a smoker and also work in the oil and gas industry, well, that means you're actually high, at higher risk than, than people who do not smoke and work in the oil and gas industry. Uh, benzene is found in, if you smoke around a pack a day, uh, benzene levels can be found in your blood and your urine. So you do want to be aware of that if you want to really want to do something about it, I would encourage you to join one of our smoking, our company's smoking cessation programs and stop smoking. Acute effects. We talk about acute, we talk about chronic effects. And acute effects include dizziness, nausea, loss of uh, sleep, sleeplessness, a wide range of other things, uh, including acute effects to the central nervous system. We're talking about less than 25 ppm, but potentially we're, we're really mostly talking about for really more serious acute effects, we're talking about uh, rates above 150 pp ppm, and we're, again, we're talking about an eight-hour workday or shift. Or, uh, shift. <clears throat> Death can occur at 20,000 ppm from exposure to benzene. Chronic damages to the liver, blood marrow count, and you know when we get into the chronic effects, really we're talking about leukemia and um, a plastic uh, anemia potential mutation of cells, all these things are affected by, by exposure to, to benzene. And so common routes of entry, how do we get it in our system? Well, from our mouth, we can breathe it, we can uh, get it through our skin, and exhaust fumes can, can also make contact, the liquid can make contact with us, as well as the fumes can contact our skin as well as breathing it, and then later we can eat uh, without, without washing our hands, and we can contact benzene by, ing by ingesting it. And dual simultaneous exposure benzene is something to be mindful of and be aware of because 
uh, death and all of benzene, uh, make, make it more compounded uh, in your body. So you want to be aware, mindful of that. If you're also using toluene, you're ex being exposed to toluene and benzene simultaneously, well, now you've got more problems because uh, the combination of these two materials will keep, uh, keep you from being able to, ri to rid benzene from your, from your system. And this is because they both toluene and benzene metabolize much in the same way. The, now we're going to talk about threshold limits. We're going to talk about PPMs. That's parts per million. And we're going to talk about this threshold limit, TLV, which is that has to do with uh, the, the, the values here of the threshold. And it's 0.5 ppm, which just so happens it's the same as ACGIH. Theirs is also 0 .0 0.5 uh, T, T, uh, TL, TLV. And then there's an R, REL, which is 0 0.01. And that has to do that has to do with recommended exposure limits in an eight hour period. And the VEI rate that that uh, ACGIH is is uh, not available. It's still under study. Preventative solutions. This is this is what it's all about. We want to work safe every single day. We want to go home safely. Be mindful that, that many solvents, adhesive, lubricants, fuels contain a certain percentage of, of benzene. So we want to wear the PPE. We want to use the PPE every, every day. You know, we've got all these kinds of things. We've got our, you know, our heart hits. We've got our, our mask. We've got our, our, um, our eyewear. And, uh, you know, we want to wash our hands every day. We want to wash our hands every day at, uh, before we eat. We want to wash extremely well with, with uh, detergent and water uh, before we eat or smoke or drink. Wash your hands exposed immediately after contact with benzene. Company provided means it's company approved, and we're talking about uh, PPE now. And cartridges. Cartridges are important. The cartridge that you're going to use for particulate dust is not the same. It's not the same as what you're going to use for benzene fumes. And so there's small amounts of benzene, depending on the PPE we're talking about. And then if we're talking about spill cleanup or, you know, large amounts, which, you know, in an accident or something, now we're talking about respirators, self-contained respirators. Use precaution cleaning up spills. And clean up spills immediately when they occur and report them. And be aware that, uh, that this, this is assuming that you are trained to clean up the spills. Be mindful that fumes containing benzene are heavier than air. This is important to know. Benzene is actually heavier than air. This means it can linger in low-lying areas. It also can linger and you can't see it. You can't see hydrocarbon fumes unless you were talking about um, uh, ultraviolet light. You know, we have some, some ways now. To, we have um, equipment that will sense that. Use an air supplying respirator for, for heavy fume work. Spill, uh, spill cleanup, etc. Report suspected benzene spills to your supervisor or to another competent person in the workforce. And preventative measures. Always use ventilation where provided. Make sure fumes are not backing up in work areas. Use portable ventilation as much as possible. Check your MSDSs. Uh, make sure you know what's on there. Change clothing after contact. I didn't say this. I wanted to make it sure it's really, I want to make it really clear that benzene is also corrosive. It will react with chlorine products and other products like fluorine. And so be aware of that. This can cause, this can be cause serious catastrophes. So be aware that you can't just mix some of these. And this includes gasoline. You can't mix gasoline with chlorine safely. And Return soiled work uniforms to work. Not take, don't take it home. Don't take them home or wash them in a public laundry facility. You want to be sure you return it to the to our contractor who provides our work uniforms. And uh, remember that the ideal solution is to to reduce your exposure to benzene almost completely as much as we possibly can. And be mindful that at work and home to prevent at work and at home to prevent benzene exposure. If something seems seems unsafe, say something. With proper planning, correct engineering controls, and the correct PPE, we can we can ensure a safe work environment. We can go home every day safely. If something again, I said it. I'm going to say it twice. If something seems unsafe, ask someone. Say something. And with proper planning, correct engineering controls. Again, I'm restating that again. So we're talking about engineering controls. We're talking about a safe work environment. And 
So, you know, we want to be safe. We're going to go home safely. Thank you very much. I'm available. We covered this material really fast. If you have more questions, I'm available to talk about any of these things, these issues we've talked about, these safety issues we've talked about today. Thank you very much.